Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying that this government unequivocally values public servants. They value their time, their effort, and all that they do to keep the wheels of government turning. And so, Mr. Speaker, myself, I would have moved, or I'm going to move, an amendment that was distributed in Parliament to the motion that was raised by the Honorable Member. And it states, Mr. Speaker, be it resolved clause, delete word advises in first line and substitute with encourages. Be it resolved clause, delete the phrase no more than one month after the commencement of their employment in public sector and replace with the words within a reasonable time on receipt of a letter of appointment or a signed contract. Mr. Speaker, even before I get into this particular or the debate of this motion, I wish to stand here as I'm standing right now on a point of order, standing order that is, four to one, six. We stand here and the opposition members come here and they say they don't want to make this political. But yet, the first thing that comes out of the honorable member's mouth, Mr. Figueroa, is an attack on an abuse on the speaker. And I am going to raise four to one six and stand on that point of order because it is absolutely ridiculous that you can come here and say that the speaker have done so. Mr. We also Mr. stand Speaker, here, or the member of the opposition Mr. also Speaker, stand on the other side and says, Mr. Speaker, I stand on for the one six. Jesus, Honorable Member Mr. Figueroa, Honorable Member Minister, yeah, let me hear the four to one six. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister is imputing uh, improper motives towards me, and I trust that she will stick to the matter at hand and debate the Honorable Member Mr. Figuera, I don't agree with your um, interpretation of Charter 1 6. Honorable Minister, please continue. Thank you. The Honorable Member may shout on the other side that we are not sticking to what is before us, yet, three quarters of his presentation was not on the motion. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, The Honorable Member, Mr. Rab Mr. Tabitha Sarabohali, stated that as the Minister of Public Service, she wanted to be able to see persons being paid timely. She said now that she wants to see them being paid within a month. But the Honorable Member sat in the very office that I now sit for approximately a year. And so I figured that she would gather what the process is. Mr. Speaker, this government does not want to see public servants waiting three months to be paid. They do not want to even see public servants wait for two months to be paid. Mr. Speaker, there is a process in place that if you are on a new employment list or recruitment and has to go through a process, that first of all, the agency has to submit your name. That has to be done in a timely manner. There are credentials and other documents that have to be submitted by a new public servant or someone who's entering the public service. And you have to get those documents also within a timely manner through multiple agencies. So when you get to the Ministry of Public Service, you go through several agencies before you get there. And what is a fact, Mr. Speaker and honorable members for your information, is that even when persons are waiting for their approval, agencies such as the regional bodies and other ministries would pay an advance. 
they will place them on a temporary employment so that they can be paid while waiting. So that is a system that is in place right now. You see the unfortunate thing for the opposition, please, Mr. Speaker, is that I am actually in the driving seat at the moment, so I know what is factually happening. When we come here and we speak on the other side, we bring a lot of hearsay to the house and say that I cannot say this and I cannot say that because it's for security reasons. Mr. Speaker, every public servant that has come to the Ministry of Public Service, we have tried within a timely manner to be able to get those per persons their salaries. That obviously involves a multi-agency uh, collaboration. So Mr. Speaker, let's get our facts straight before we come here and we want to throw out to the public servants, the government does not care. This is absolutely, absolute rubbish. The government has, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, for five years, for five years, or almost five years, the opposition was in government. And I heard the honorable member, Mr. Figure, we need to take care of this and we need to take care of that, but yet nothing was done in the five years to remedy the situation, absolutely nothing. And I can say that a circular, a circular was put out by the honorable member. Mr. Speaker, I am not afraid to say it, stand here. I am not afraid to stand here and say that the honorable member, Ms. Halley, put out a circular in December of 2019, in which she said that persons were reporting to, to her ministry at the time that they were waiting three months for salaries and that she wanted it to be seized. And that was all the circular basically said. There was no timeline placed to assist public servants. Mr. Speaker, based on our amendment, I am saying that we are going to work collaboratively with all agencies to ensure that within a reasonable time after, after the request has been sent to be able to get persons their salary. So I stand here today and I take offense to everything that has been said because this government, whether be it public servants, whether be it farmers, whether be it the vulnerable groups, the senior citizens, the young children, this government from day one has been in all of the regions and villages of this country trying to assist and have been assisting. But I suppose it becomes a threat to the opposition when we are doing what we have to do for the people. It is also no secret that the opposition is affected by the government being in places like Region 10, like Boston, like Mocker, and all of those places, treating all of the citizens equally as they deserve. So that is why half of my honorable, my honorable friend, Mr. Figueroa's presentation was based on cost of living. That is why he deviated from what the motion was because he wants to he wants to carry a narrative that this government is doing nothing to help people when in fact our work is showing for itself. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance will come and speak on this issue as well. And I am very certain that he also, he also will come to tell public servants that he has been putting a system in place to assist. So all agencies will be collaborating to ensure that public servants get their salaries within a reasonable time. And I am to say this, Mr. Speaker, that while we absolutely agree that no public servant should wait three months for their salaries. 
the honorable member could not, as a sitting minister, put a time frame of one month as she wants to do in opposition now, because she understood at that time what the process was to be able to have salaries paid out to new employees. So where there are bottlenecks, we will look at those bottlenecks. And I find it quite disappointing that we had a whole conversation about how public servants want to pass through the PSC. Well, let me say this, as the minister who has received the information, public servants want to either be on the fixed establishment or they want to be on contract as is allowed by the public service rules. It is a prerogative that they have. And it is a prerogative that we are going to allow public servants to have. That is one. Two, I am also disappointed that the honorable member said that we are that persons are not being passed through the fixed establishment. In all of the five, almost five years that the AP and new AFC sat in office, persons were deliberately not passed through the PSC, and that information is on hand. And that was a PSC that was headed by and and you, it was your government that controlled it at the time public servants were left off so i find it quite dishonest that the honorable member will come here to say that this government is trying to prevent persons from passing through the fixed establishment mr speaker they have the right to go on contract if they want, and this government has been allowing that. So employment has been taking place. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Mr. Ganesh Mahipal seems to think that he doesn't embarrass the entire country when he speaks, but he does. <laughs> whether it be in opposition or in government. Mr. Speaker, again, I stand here to tell you that also a problem that existed while the APNU AFC was in office, but did nothing to fix it. Agencies and ministries continue to employ persons physically without the approval of the Ministry of Public Service without the approval of the necessary of the relevant ministry so when you have a request when you have someone sitting in a position for four months and then you send a requester for approval approval comes to the ministry of public gets to the ministry of public service service three or four months after the ministry approves you go to the ministry of finance you go back to the agency then go then it goes to the ministry of finance for, to be placed on the payroll. That caused a delay. All of those things, Mr. Speaker, we are trying to remedy as a government. That existed then. Nothing was done to cure that, which caused a major problem or the majority of the issues that surrounded the payment of salaries, the timely payment of salaries to public servants. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure, and I move again, that this honorable house sees that the amendment is relevant, sees that the amendment that is proposed by myself and the government of Guyana be appropriate in terms of the timely payment of public servants based on what we can remedy in the system based on the system itself and the process as we have agency, multi-agency collaboration. Mr. Speaker, I thank you.